Monday Motivation with Bukola. It's a show about inspiration, women empowerment, beauty, business, health, money, culture, entertainment, and advocacy. And I have a fabulous guest in the house today. She's a hair naturalist. That's the title I'm giving her. <laughs> and there is Lola Fawora. And she is uh, a graduate and an MBA holder. She helps people with their natural hair. She's an author and a best-selling author too on Amazon. You are going to be hearing from her today how she got into natural hair. I'm not going to spill the bean. I know a little bit, but I'm not going to give you the tip. I will let you hear it from her directly. And how to take care of your natural hair, especially if you, if, you are, if you look like me, or you have a daughter, or even a son that looks like me. <laughs> because I do struggle with my son too. <laughs> with, our, with our natural hair. So you're going to be hearing from her. Wait till you see her hair. Her hair is looking so... Oh. You know, <laughs> that's how I can describe my hair to you. So so thank you so much, Lala, for yeah. joining us today on yeah. the show. I'm excited to be here, <laughs> definitely. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, thanks. So today's quotes, well, you know by now that I'm a lover of brainy quotes. So this also is from Brainy Quotes, and it says... Start doing what's necessary, then do what's possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible. Mm -hmm. And this quote is from Francis of Assisi. Mm -hmm. I will take it again. Start by doing what's necessary, and then do what's possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible. And this quote again is by Francis of Assisi. Whoa. You know, did you get the message from that? Start. Don't just wait for something to happen. Make it happen. And then start doing what you think, you know, the necessary thing to do. Start doing it. And then before you know it, you find that, oh, I can do this. You do it. And you are beginning to do the impossible. The thing that seems like, have you tried something before? And before you tried that thing, you thought it was absolutely impossible. Or somebody even told you, don't even try it. Mm -hmm. Or many people say to you, don't dare. But you did anyway, mm -hmm. and you begin to see results. So don't wait for things to happen. Make things happen. I'm talking to you women because I know you are the most people who are lovers of this show. Thank you to you all. So make it happen. Start doing something now. Do you have a dream in your heart and you've been thinking about this dream forever and you have not even taken one step yet? Use this opportunity to take your first step and you will be blown away by what you can do. So again, this is Monday Motivation with Bukola. It's a show about inspiration, women empowerment, beauty, health, business, money, culture, entertainment, and advocacy. And we have a fabulous, fabulous guest in the house. She's Funke Fawora. She's going to be talking to us today about natural hair, how to take care of your natural hair, how you struggle with natural hair. Come and get tips today on how to take care of your natural hair. So thank you so much, Lala, again, for coming on the show. We want to know who is Lola. <laughs> I know, I know. You mentioned Funke and then Lola, so let's just call it Lola. <laughs> oh wait! So it's yes. I don't know. Young, wait. Yeah. So it's, you know Funke yeah, for Lola, right? Yeah, Lola for Lola would just be fine. Okay. Yes. 
Wait, am I, I miss you and somebody else up? No, 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 that's still my name. I'm still at Funke. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I go by Lola Fora. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> thanks. Because Lola is easier, right? It's easier yeah. to pronounce, right? So I go by Lola for where. <laughs> okay, I think I know I know where I'm getting it now. Um I think your Facebook is Ade Funke. Yes, my oh, personal yes. Facebook. So I'm because I'm a picture person. Okay. I save images in my head, so mm -hmm. I use those images. So it's the image I'm looking, and then when I'm looking at the written content, I'm seeing Lola because mm -hmm. I also have your bio in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. <laughs> okay. So she's both names, Funke, Ade Funke, and Lola. Yes. We are rolling with it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> let's, so, let's make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> so who are you? Who am I? Well, I'm Adefunke uh, Olufunlola Fulora. I am the child of the Most High God. I help women to embrace who they are, to appear in the world in their power, and just to know that regardless of whatever flaws or whatever imperfections we might think that we have, we are enough. So I, I do that with empowering women on how to take care of their natural hair. And expressing who they are, expressing their personalities with their natural beauty. So, um, I found out that you've been on this natural hair journey since 2003. What led to that? Good question. So, I've always been the one back in Nigeria. I used to, I'm originally from Nigeria, I used to perm my hair. And then, even when I came into the US, I was always, you know, having the touch ups. But then I realized that two weeks after the touch up, I'm like ready for another touch up. I'm like, okay, what is this? So I used to get my hair in braids just so I don't have to do the touch up so I can extend the time of the perm. And then in 2002, this awareness just came upon me. I was going through, <clears throat> excuse me, natural hair blogs and forums. And I was reading, I was looking at all these different pictures. I'm like, hmm, I wish I could also do my hair like that too. So one day I went to a store in downtown Chicago. As I was trying to get into the rolling doors, another lady was coming out. And then I looked at her hair, it was so black and shiny and so beautiful. And I was like, oh, wow, I love your hair. And she told me it's my natural hair. I twisted it. I'm like, yes, that's it. I want that too. And that's it. So one day, just I think it was in August, it was the fall of 2003. My husband came back from work and I told him, hey, Let's go to the barber shop. It was like to do to go do what? I want to cut my hair. You want to cut your hair? Are you sure? I say yes, I'm sure. So we went to the barber shop and then I cut off my hair. And that was how I started my natural hair journey. Whoa. So how has it been? I mean, it's not been easy. I remember even during that period, after I cut the hair, I liked it. I come home. My mom. My mom was with us that time because she was taking care of my middle daughter. And then she was like, oh, wow, what did you do? I'm like, well, I cut off my hair. So even after then, it took me some time to learn how to take care of the hair. And I remember there was a point in time that I wanted to actually do a touch up again. And my husband was like, are you sure that's really what you want? I was like, yeah, no, not really. But I just, I'm just, I don't know how to deal with it. It's a lot of work. So I, I said, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get braids again. I know how to handle braids. So I'll get braids. So I would get braids. During that time, I got braids and I was able to shift my focus from that. And during the time I had braids on, I was still reading and doing the research just so I can know, okay, what am I doing wrong? What do I need to do to move forward and just be grounded and be comfortable with it? One of the most important uh, things that you can do is finding products that work for your natural hair because your natural hair will react differently to another person's hair to, to the same products. I mean, it took me a while to actually find what, you know, would work for my hair. So that's been the journey. It could be overwhelming. It could be frustrating, but you just have to know if this is what you really want to do, then stick with it and things will eventually work out for you. Wow. So, um, in essence, for somebody who wants to wear natural hair, they need to keep searching for what product will work for them. 
So why well, are you looking for what product will work for you? Because you can't really get sample products. How much are we talking about investment here? <laughs> So in the in the natural hair world, we call we call a phase a product junkie phase. That's the phase that if you're going on this natural hair journey, you would somehow have to pass through that phase because now you have to try. You read on some you you watch a YouTube video. The person has the same hair texture with yours, and you're like, hey, this product. I know this product will work for me. Then you go to the shop, you buy the product, and then you see, oh, you're not getting the same results as what you saw in the YouTube video. So what I would, what I do is you buy the products, hopefully you get it from, um, from a store that you can easily return. So that way you can get your money back, you can get, get a refund or maybe get a store credit. So at least you're not stuck with products that you're never gonna use. And sometimes even down the road, the products that did not work for you in the beginning of your journey, later on it might now work for your hair. So, I mean, as a naturalista, you would have to pass through that phase, unfortunately. Oh, did you experience that? Did you experience that? Oh, yeah. You tried a product, it didn't work at the beginning, and then later on you tried it and it's working. Absolutely. What yeah. would you say could be responsible for that? Because as, as we grow the hair, our hair texture will, it will remain the same, but sometimes it will react differently. It will just react differently to different, products at every point in time so that's that's just how it is for me initially it was shea butter shea butter was so heavy for my hair you know i would put it for moisturizing and it would just be sitting on there it's not going to do anything but now once in a while i still use it i use it in my Cantu shea butter and it works really well for me so that's an example where at one point in time during my natural hair journey shea butter didn't work for me but currently it is working for me Oh, thanks so much. We're going to take a break now. Welcome back. If you are just joining us for the first time, this is Monday Motivation with Bukola. It's a show about inspiration, women empowerment, beauty, business, money, culture, entertainment, and advocacy. And we have a fabulous guest in the house today. She is Adefunke Lola Furola. <laughs> so I got that ring name this time. So thank you so much again for joining us on this show. And you've been talking about natural hair and your own personal journey to natural hair. Yes. Now, in the let me even just narrow down to united states for example okay there are biracial kids there are adopted parents and sometimes those parents have kids they have adopted from the african race or african descendants and they're struggling with the hair so for somebody like that who is brand new to even learning about this unique kind of hair, what would you recommend? Yeah, I mean, I always feel for them, you know, uh, like uh, a Caucasian mother who has adopted a black girl and now she's faced with taking care of the hair. I mean, even for us blacks, we're still struggling with, you know, taking care of our own hair, not to talk of a Caucasian woman, now stuck with a black girl. So, I mean, what I would advise, there's so much information out there. We all know that. There's so much information out there about natural hair. But one thing they can do is go to YouTube, just search for natural hair or mixed race, you know, black hair, and then see what, what they are doing with the hair, how, how to take care of it. I know some Caucasian mothers just do not want to have to, to deal with that. So they end up taking the little girls to, to the beauty shop. So if that's the route you want to go, that's, that's another option. I would just say make sure that the beauty shop is, is mostly for natural hair. So the hairstylist in there deals mainly with natural hair. So that way she knows how, how to handle your daughter's hair. Okay, so what about if the beauty store does not deal mainly with natural hair, but deals with all kinds of hair? 
would you still recommend that kind of a beauty shop? No, I will not because the way and the products that the way you handle natural hair is different from the way you handle it prem day. Prem day is so well, I will say it's a lot easier because it's just straight. You're washing everything straight. But with uh, with natural hair, you have all, all these different calls. You have to do the deep conditioning. You have you you cannot just brush. You need somebody that is experienced with that particular, you know, texture of hair to deal with that. Otherwise, the hair will end up breaking. And uh, with natural hair, there are different categories of hair in fact i think there was a time i was reading and i saw different hair types yes i don't know now is it four or more than four types of hair but you know just for the layman we have the kinky 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 hair meaning really thick and hard to comb and the soft texture kind of hair that is really uh, soft is natural, but it's easy to come through. So what would be your recommendation for parents or people who have the kinky hair? Because the scalp is tender mm -hmm. and those with the kinky hair struggle a lot. I've seen kids crying, even adults. I've seen adults crying because the hair is so kinky and their scalp is very sensitive. So what would be your recommendation for those kind of people? Well, I always say kinky hair is good hair. I love that. My hair is kinky too. Because when you know how to deal with it, then the outcome is always very beautiful. So when you say kinky hair, kinky hair just means that the, 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 the texture is a, is a bit coarse. So when you say you're combing, we cannot comb the hair when it's dry. There has to be moisture in there before you can pull a comb through it. Otherwise, you'll be asking for trouble. And that's why uh, the kids, my little girl, to my, my third uh, baby, her scalp is so sensitive. And then her hair tangles a lot. So what I had to do for her was I had to cut. I was seeing tangles everywhere. It was like the hair was locking up. So I had to cut it off. And now it's a lot better. Now I can easily... When there is water in there, I can easily comb through. So one thing I always advise is make sure that the hair is moisturized before you uh, you put a comb through it. Otherwise, you will be asking for trouble, and then the hair can easily break. So the moisture you are you talking about for the hair does it have to be water or something that is not water based, or it always has to have water in it? Always remember that the best moisturizer is water. Oh. The best moisturizer is water. Oil is not, is not a moisturizer and cream is not a moisturizer. Moistur a moisturizer would always have water as its first ingredient. So you might want to use a leave-in conditioner. A leave-in conditioner is liquid. Most of the time it will be liquid. So you can apply that in there. Just spray that in the hair before you now comb. And you will see when you're combing, you make sure that you hold down the root of the hair and you start with the ends. Take out the tangles first, gradually, and then you can release, and then you go down to the length of the hair. So that's how you're able to comb without hurting the little girl. Wow, this is good to know for you if you are a mom and you have a daughter with kinky hair, you better be holding on to Lola now to learn more from her. So, and you did a book. A book on healthy hair is good hair. A quick yes. guide to developing a healthy natural hair care regimen. So, can you tell us about this book and uh, the goal for the book? Yeah, thank you. So, I mean, I have three daughters and they all have their natural hair. And they go out, they see other young girls, either some wearing weaves or just in braids, and some don't even know what their hair looks like because they're constantly in braids. And then they see my girls, they're like, how do you do that? How do you do that? Because I've been, because I have that knowledge, I've been able to pass that knowledge down to my girls. And then it's not only meant for my girls, I want to expose that same knowledge to other young girls too. So that was why I decided to put all that information in a book. I will share a story. 
there was a mom that one time she she had the daughter and the daughter because of the friends that she she had then she had a caucasian friends and because of course their hair is always straight she decided she wanted to be straightening her hair so the mom will take her to the egyptian salon every two weeks to get her hair straightened and then over a period of time the hair was breaking and not only that the head never returned back to to the color state so the hair was damaged so she reached out to me because she was seeing my daughters how the hair was you know thriving and looking healthy so she reached out to me and said lola what can i do so i told her hey you would have to do protein treatments what product are you using and make sure you stop going to this egyptian store so i mean she was doing all that i recommended and then within six months there was a turnaround with the daughter's hair. Now the hair was looking healthier. And she told her, you know, you can no longer, you can no longer go to the store to get your hair straightened. And because she was seeing other young girls with my daughters looking at, you know, the way they twist their hair and then twist and then the color style. Now she has her hair always in color style. And then those Caucasian friends, now they're asking her, aren't you gonna get your hair straightened? And you know what her answer was? No, I love my hair curly like this. That's empowerment, that's freedom. That's my goal with my book, to teach every young girl and even the, the mothers, the black girls, that hey, your hair is beautiful the way it is. As long as your hair is healthy, regardless of if it's 3B, if it's 4A, if it's 4C, if it's kinky, if you take care of your hair, it will be healthy and that is good hair. So that was why I decided to write the book. Wow, so how can somebody get your book? Well, I, two ways. I have a website, lolafora.com. You can get the book on there. Or you can go to amazon.com and type in Lola Fora. My book will come out. I actually have two, one paperback and then another one for ebook. And that's an ebook. That's mainly for, for dry hair, how to take care of dry hair and make sure that your hair is always moisturized. Because when your hair is moisturized, then your hair is bound to grow. I love that. When your hair is moisturized, your hair is bound to grow. Yes. And that brings me to this other question that I do here. Because there are some people who believe that you shouldn't moisturize your hair. You shouldn't even try to put hair cream or anything in your hair. So what would be your reaction to statements like that? If you have a plant, if you have a plant, what do you do to the plant to make it grow? You water it. And that's just the same with her hair. If, they, if the hair is too dry, if the hair is too dry, if there is no water in there, it's gonna break. So what I would advise, make sure that if you can plant the water, you know, the, if you can water the plants outside, why would you not water your own hair? Why would you not, you put water in the, in the body to hydrate the body. Why would you not hydrate your hair? So that's the question I will give to them. So whatever you think is right, you go ahead and do it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks. Okay, we are going to take a short break now. I will be right back. Welcome back. If you are just joining us for the first time, this is Monday Motivation with B Lola Fora is giving us great value and information on how to do that. And check out our book on Amazon to learn the steps you need to take to help you enjoy your natural hair. So I want to ask you about girl empowerment and women empowerment that you do with um natural hair you say something about the girl who changed back to natural hair and a friend asked her are you not going to straighten your hair back she said no you know i like my curly hair and you said that is empowerment yes. can you tell us a little bit more about that for women and girls okay so while growing up depending on what environment you grew up in or what you were exposed to so many things mostly negative things were being said about the natural hair and so with that in mind 
a lot of girls and even young women, they, they grew up with that in their back of their mind saying, hey, my natural hair is not beautiful. It's not beautiful enough. And then because of what we see in the media, we only see long wigs and straight hair. You think you need to, to have that to feel beautiful. But the moment you are able, the moment that a woman or a girl is able to look herself in the mirror with her natural hair and sees herself beautiful, that is freedom. That is freedom that no weave, no wigs, nothing can ever buy. And that's what I'm selling to people. I want you to be able to look at yourself in the mirror with your natural hair, regardless of what it is, and say, hey, I'm beautiful. I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made with my natural hair. So uh, what would you say to somebody who gets comments, coming from friends, coming from colleagues, coming from co-workers, where somebody is telling you, oh, put on your wig, put on your wig, you know, where you have just your natural hair on you. What would be your comment to somebody receiving that kind of a comment? So for me, I always look at it this way. What presentation, how are you presenting yourself? If your hair is presentable and you know it's all neat and tidy and somebody's saying put on your wig, well, you, ha you don't have to listen to them. As long as you can see yourself and walk in that beauty that you see, with time they will leave you alone. They will know, okay, that's what she wants to do and you, you don't need their permission to wear your natural hair. They will be fine later on. <laughs> but always remember that. Always remember that somebody else is also looking at you. Are you going to be an encourager to that person? Or are you going to tell that person, hey, the hair doesn't matter. Let's forget about it and let's just put on our wigs and let's go on. No. Always remember that you are also a motivation to somebody else. You never know who's watching. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So um, what would be your last word for the audience today? If you're thinking of going natural, I always don't like saying that. If you're thinking of embracing your natural hair, go for it. Just make sure you do your research and always ask yourself, why am I doing this? Are you doing this because you want to do it for yourself or are you doing it for somebody else? Decide to embrace your natural hair, to embrace who you are. You're going to ask yourself, why did I wait this long? I love that. Why did I wait this long? Yeah. So how can we get in contact with you, please? Well, I have a page on Facebook, Lola Fora. I also have a blog, uh, Editor in Kinks, as in E for Edward, D for Dog, I for Ink, T for Tom, O for Orange, R for Richard, I for India, N for Nancy, and then K for King, I for India, N for Nancy, K for King and S for Sam, editorinkinks.com. That's my blog where I share tips on how to grow healthy, beautiful hair. If you need, I'm also on Instagram, Editor in Kings, and also on, on Instagram as Lola Fawara. So if you want to send me an email, you can send an email to Lola Fawara 16, number 16, at gmail.com, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time on the show today. Thank you, and we hope that you will be back. Sure, thank you so much, Bukola. Thanks for having me. Now I've gotten to know a little bit more about you, and I, I just want to appreciate and honor you in what you're doing for the, for, the, for the human race as well, and especially for the women. I pray that God will continue to strengthen you as you're freeing other women you also will receive your own freedom. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bukola.